Hello, everybody. Welcome back to ADHD Power Tools. Today, I want to talk about three bad habits that are so difficult to overcome. And the first of these three I want to go over is biting your nails. Real difficult bad habit. I'm, I'm one of the few who struggle with this um, biting nails bad habit. Um, Brooke, I want to ask you, how can we overcome um, biting nails? Sure. So a lot of us who have ADHD also, as we've mentioned in previous episodes, um, might have an anxiety disorder as well. And with that being said, we can compensate for that anxiety disorder by biting our nails. So it helps us to relieve stress, nervousness, tension, boredom, all those things. And before we know it, it becomes this bad habit that we just live with. Um, and it's also, you know, it's associated with the brain's basal ganglia. It's, it's the overactivity in the brain um, that creates anxiety. So you bite your nails. I bite the cuticles on my fingers. Uh, I know that a lot of us have grown up with this bad habit for sure. Um, I think, like you said, knowing that biting nails could root from an underlying anxiety is very true. And addressing that is super important. Um, yeah. yeah. A few tools you want to, do you want to go ahead and say some yeah, tools? Sure. Sure. So with any negative habit, um, the easiest way to, um, get rid of that habit is by replacing it with another. So if you are a cigarette smoker, that's why people replace their cigarette smoking with a nicotine patch or gum, um, because it's, it's associating that habit with something else now. So with, um, nail biting or cuticle biting or any of that, we can change the habit to squeezing a stress ball, um, you know, getting your nails done. Even if you're a man, you know, maybe just doing clear nail polish. I know that they sell that like bitter tasting products for your nails as well. Um, so that can help overcome some of these bad habits, but also some of them might be so deep rooted that you might need to seek professional help for it as well. Yep. For sure, for sure. And you, you speak about the um the the bitter um nail uh nail polish. Mm -hmm. My mom once my mom once used it too. I I've I've tried before. It could be it could be deeper rooted. It really, really could. And like I said, addressing, you know, the underlying anxiety, knowing that oral fixations, I mean, um, are are a major thing. Um, I think that helps that 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 helps me the most, whether it's chewing gum, having a toothpick having a Hall's cough drop in your mouth, that helps a lot, um, you know, to prevent you from biting your nails, just that oral fixation, understanding that and having someone to tell you to stop. Um, my, my girlfriend, you know, I've been dating my girlfriend for a while and for the first few years, she just like, you know, was, it didn't phase her whatsoever. But then finally I was like, yeah, this is getting out of hand, out of hand, Andrea. Just, <laughs> can you, can you please to, uh, like, tell me to stop when I'm doing it? And it gets really annoying because she always tells me to stop now, but it helps. It helps out a lot. It helps out a lot. Time I'm do with you know, her. Do you know the comedian Aziz Asari and Aziz Ansari? No, no. What, tell me about it. So he does this comedic um, skit where he talks about dating and he's like, oh yeah, in the beginning, everything's amazing. Everyone loves each other. You're like, oh, you just did this, <laughs> you know? And then all of a sudden, everything starts to bother you, like the water sucking. You hear that. Can you just put the water away? <laughs> so when you said that, that reminded me. That yeah. been for a while. Exactly. <laughs> and, and that's what's going on. You know, I, I, I was the one who told, told her, please let me know when to do it. And now I'm getting annoyed of it, you know? And <laughs> so it's just like, uh, but it helps. It really does. It's good. Having that surround that, you know, that support system telling you, when to stop, when to not, you bring up a stress ball, playing with a fidget toy. My little sister, I have, I have 11 year old sister and um, she, she always drops off fidget toys in my room. So I have a little fidget toy. Right here. I play with this, things like that help you get distracted. Um, kind of uh, you soothe that, um, those anxious moments that, that we have. And um, yeah, you, you know, I, I think it's super important. And identifying the trigger too. Sometimes what is making us anxious that we're biting our nails? We might not know in the moment. So it might just, 
need to be something you, you know, keep your mind out and be more aware of. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And now to move on to our second bad habit that we want to overcome, overcome is staying disorganized organization. We've talked about it a bunch, Brooke. Oh yeah. It's our favorite. <laughs> yeah, can you tell us what's talk to us a little about this organization and organization. Um, why sure. us with ADHD, it, it, we have some trouble and, and, and some tools to overcome it. So for people with ADHD, we uh, have low activity in our prefrontal cortex and um, that can lead to executive dysfunction and disorganization, um, lack of organization, which is part of our executive functioning. So um, in order to become more organized in certain areas, like we can be very organized in um, things that are important to us and not organized in other areas that might be important to us, but we just don't have the, the tools and the systems to do it. It might cause us too much stress, all of those things, or the things that we don't care as much about. Um, so one tool is to delegate the responsibility of organizing. So maybe your significant other might be better in this area and that might be his or her strength and you give that to your partner or you can hire someone to help you create these organizational systems. So um, being aware of what you're wanting to create and then scheduling time in your calendar each day to do it and being accountable, of course, to that. And as well, because of the low activity in the prefrontal cortex, strengthening it is important. So, you know, we've spoken about um, my ebook where we talk about meditation, exercise, um, and sometimes even nutritional supplements and diet can help. Yes, yes. Schedule is 10, 15 minutes a day to organize your things, uh, you know, piggybacking on what you said. Um, exercise helps boost that blood flow. And not only does it help boost the blood flow, bring blood to the brain, and, you know, but it helps just relieve that stress, you know, just, I've, I've said it before, everything is laying on top of you on your shoulders vertically, it lays down in front of you horizontally, um, have a good, healthy, nutritious meal after promote that organized lifestyle, healthy lifestyle. And honestly, if you're watching this video right now and your surroundings are disorganized, pause it right now, drop your device and organize it real quick. It's all about starting right now and just getting it organized. You know, this morning I woke up, my desk was a little Organ, um, disorganized. I had some clothes everywhere. I just, I, I felt a little fuzzy. I couldn't get, get, get going with things. And I had just had to drop my phone, organize it right away. And that relief just, yeah. it's great. Yeah. You know, clear desk, clear mind, as they say, and yep. um, clearing the chaos can clear the way that you're thinking. Some people can live in disorganization and it might bother other people and not, might not bother them. So of course, if it is bothering you and you want help, these are the solutions and tools that you can use. But if it doesn't bother you and it doesn't bother the people around you, mm -hmm. then, you know, it's up to you whether or not you want to do something about it. Yes, 100%, 100%. And on to our last bad habit um, for today uh, that it's, it's important to overcome is procrastination. Favorite one. <laughs> our favorite one, right? Um, Brooke, tell us about procrastination. And, um, sure, sure. Some tools to overcome it. So again, this also um, is because of the underactivity of the prefrontal cortex for individuals with ADHD. So it's the hallmark of ADHD procrastination. And the reason why this happens very often is because of our perfectionism. And um, we want it to be perfect. Um, we can be stressed out if it isn't perfect. And just, uh, very often we don't even know what perfect is. So we're achieving something that isn't real. Um, so we might put off putting sending that email because we have to have the perfect words um, or we might put off um, doing this project because we don't feel like, um, you know, the end result is perfect or we don't have the tools or knowledge to get there. So, um, you know, it's important to understand that you need to make sure that you have um, the, the right information to get it done, the right information for you. So you feel comfortable and also to cut it off at a certain point when, you know, it's done. Yes. Yes. And it's something about something about procrastination, something about even getting tasks done in general and procrastinating it. Um, you know, it's it, sometimes we can't really get it started until it's interesting, challenging or urgent. And it's really important to figure out how to make your task interesting. 
For example, me, I'm a student uh, um, in college and I need, a, I need to study for an exam or just even do homework, write a lab report, um, you know, just get some, get some note taking done. How am I gonna make this interesting? Flashcards, a piece of paper, watching videos, someone explaining it, having someone there, a study buddy to get it done. How can I make it challenging? I got maybe get quizzed every 30 minutes with my study buddy, with the flashcards, challenge myself and how to make it urgent Set a due date that day, the 1% rule. Try to get as much done ahead of time. And I think it's so important to get those done and create that like um, just just disorganization. We talk about that. How to take that 10, 15 minutes to remind yourself what you want to achieve every day is very important. Organization plays a role with that. Knowing what you want to do, having that clear um, vision of, of your path that day and yeah. those slots. Yeah. And that goes in with the reverse engineering. So knowing what your end product is and then how you're going to work to get there. So the 10, 15 minutes a day, as you mentioned, can be an option for sure. Um, and scheduling it, right? So, you know, just take two minutes to check in with yourself and say, okay, um, did I do what I said I was going to do? Um, is this the right method for me? Should I schedule something tomorrow since I didn't get it done today? As ADHDers, we often get anxious about scheduling because we think it's taking away from the tasks that we're procrastinating from. So we don't have the time to do it. But in fact, it actually gives us back the time because now we are processing what it is that we need to do and what we've gotten done. And we have a systematic way of looking at it. Yeah, those 10, 15 minutes could save you hours. So it's just really just um, putting the pen to paper and uh, putting that in your time slot as well. Exactly. Sure. We hope you liked today's video. If you want more information about ADHD, please feel free to visit our website at differentbrains.org or my website, coachingwithbrook.com. And if you enjoyed today's video, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe.